Hi everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode is entitled The Piano Mastery Checklist. I hope this new angle helps uh, to see the keys a bit better, see both hands. Um, I recently got a different tripod that's a little bit easier to film with. Um, I also want to thank everybody for their support lately of both Pro Practice, the Christmas album, and also for your donations. It really helps me um, in my endeavors, so I just wanted to say thank you up front. Um, the Piano Mastery Checklist is something very basic. I mean, it's nothing uh, revolutionary, but it can be revolutionary if you allow it to help you organize your practice sessions. So what I like to go over, it's six or seven things, uh, not too many. First thing is notes. Are you playing the right notes in your piece? Second thing is rhythm. Third thing is, you can switch the order of the, where you put the pedal um, according to the piece, but usually I'll do pedaling next. Then I'll focus on voicing, which is bringing out your melody more than the accompaniment. Then dynamics, and then rubato, which is the pushing and pulling of time. So um, I'll be doing a sight reading video, sight reading tips video uh, after this. So I'm going to do a really tough example in the sight reading video to kind of put my um, skills to the test here. So today I've decided for this video I will do uh, an easy Schubert waltz um, to kind of take you through this to kind of, because I know my viewership has a lot of different levels of um, playing. So I want to not only do hard stuff all the time. So hopefully, um, you can still learn from this even if you're an advanced player. So the first thing is notes, and I'm not gonna go over this. This is a little waltz in B minor. And maybe let me present it how a student might bring this at when they're at this level. They might bring it. are correct but uh, the rhythm's not really precise so the next thing that we need to do is make sure that our rhythm's precise so the thing that you should do is always count and use the metronome people usually do one or the other I like to absolutely do both because you can go one E and a two E and a three E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a were you counting correctly absolutely but the rhythm was terrible now let me show you Let's say our metronome is 88. You could, was I with the metronome? Absolutely I was, but there was extra beats in there. So that's why you want to count out loud and use the metronome. So one E and a two E and a three E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a one. Okay, the next thing that I like to go over is probably the pedaling. Um, with pedal, just watch my other videos called pedal. There's something called syncopated pedal. Basically, a lot of students do this. They come up with their feet and their hands. You want to keep your foot down until you've played the next note, then change your pedal. Okay, that's the next thing that I would go over is pedaling. So pedal, change, change. Just making sure the pedal's perfect. Okay, now, if you were listening there, I wasn't doing a very good job of voicing, which is bringing out the melody over the accompaniment. I was doing okay at it, but now let's enhance that. So, um, one of the great ways to do this, this is a, a quick video summing up a lot of stuff I've taught in other videos, but again, this checklist, you go through this with every piece, just write these things down that I told you. Notes, rhythm, voicing, dynamics, rubato, and pedal, six things. If you do these things, you will sound good. I think it was Horowitz or, I, if anyone knows this uh, reference, I'd be interested because I can't find it. He basically, wh whoever said this said, if your notes, rhythm, voicing, dynamics, rubato, and pedal good, are good, then you'll sound good. <laughs> it's like, oh, is that all? Okay. <laughs> so um, here's a quick voicing exercise in case, that you're str in case you're struggling. My wife taught me this one, actually. Um, she also has her doctorate in piano performance. She said, what helps me is I spread out the registers because obviously the shorter strings on the piano are higher up, so they're not usually as powerful unless you're on a super bright piano. 
um, and the strings down low are thick and long, so they have more power. So if you can do your voicing perfect like this, then you'll absolutely be fine here. Great uh, rhythm, dynamics, or sorry, rhythm, voicing, pedal, and notes. So the next thing is I want to put dynamics in there. So dynamics, I'll sometimes say shape. Is those are those words are interchangeable. That means like crescendos, diminuendos, forte, piano, all of the way that you can manipulate volume is what I'm talking about. And here's something that I want you to each think about. Besides climaxes in the piece, your left hand should always be at least one or two dynamic levels. And even at the climax, you usually want the left hand softer anyway, or the accompaniment. If, if the melody is in the left hand, you'd want the right hand softer. Wherever your melody is, you always want that to dominate. And I always tell my students, think of the right hand as a big river, like cutting in and out of a canyon. The left hand's just a small stream. So if the right hand goes way up, the left hand might only come up a little. A lot of people think that dynamics are perfectly parallel, they're not because your left hand will sound too, like it's playing too big of a part, so be careful of that, okay? So now, let's go, maybe do a little diminuendo on each of those. Now this one will crescendo to there, and then come down to there. So. The trick is to not forget about your voicing, pedal, rhythm, or, or notes as you're doing each of these. These kind of go in a sequence, okay? And the final one is rubato, which is the last step I like to do. Um, I always tell my students, tempo is the last thing I care about. It's not to say I don't care about tempo, but it's the last thing, the last step. I want all of these things perfect before you speed things up. I get so many emails every day from YouTube viewers, and by the way, if you've emailed me and I haven't responded, I am so sorry. I probably get about 20 emails a day. I try to respond to at least five a day, um, so uh, I, I will at some point hopefully <laughs> answer all of those. But I have so many people email me each day that say, I just can't get everything detailed when I'm in a fast tempo. It's like, well, then you shouldn't be doing that tempo yet. You have to work up gradually. And when I say gradually, you might download a digital metronome on your phone or um, get one that can go up one click at a time. And I remember when I was young, I would practice really tough pieces. Like I played a Rachmaninoff concerto when I was like 14, um, Ravel's Gaspar, and I would go up like one notch at a time, like 70 to 71, 71 to 72. Most people are like, oh, I'll go 70 to 80, and then they are not good at 80. You gotta be careful of that. Okay, the last thing, rubato, pushing and pulling of time. Let me show you what you might be able to do with that in this piece. just gives you an idea. I wanted to play through so you could at least hear the finished product. Um, it's not really a finished product. I haven't worked on it, but at this point I should be able to play that piece pretty well without work. Okay, so just to recap, in case you haven't written it down yet, write it down. don't write it down on a random piece of paper. Write it in the beginning of your notebook or your the piece you're working on. 
notes, rhythm, voicing. Uh, I don't care where you put pedal in here. Sometimes you like to add pedal at the very end. Sometimes you do it right after the rhythm. So notes, rhythm, pedal, voicing, more right hand, less left hand, or more melody, more less accompaniment. Dynamics or shape, so gradually getting bigger or softer. And then the final thing is pushing and pulling of time, rubato. Every one of those things after uh, notes, rhythm, even rhythm is a little subjective sometimes, but I guess it ties more into rubato. Um, so besides notes, rhythm, and um, even pedals kind of personal. So besides notes and rhythm, all of those other things are pretty personal. You can do pedaling different ways and still sound good. You can voice things at different degrees and it will still sound good. Some people like a more even voicing in Bach between the voices. Some people like a more extreme voice uh, voicing between those voices in Bach. Um, some people like super uh, extreme dynamics. I've heard uh, some people really play like in a Chopin waltz. I've heard that be really extreme. I've also heard uh, Sergei Babayan play that, and it was the most subtle, gorgeous thing I've ever heard. It was just... It was just wonderful. Uh, and then rubato is the most personal thing in my opinion. So I would listen to lots of different recordings and see how people manipulate that time. If any of you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Again, the timeline of when I can respond uh, varies, so I apologize if I haven't res responded yet, but I will do my best to, to get back to you. Um, if you'd like to donate to this project, Josh Wright Piano TV or... Um, to our Christmas album, we'd be so grateful. This helps us continue in our careers as musicians. Thank you for your support. Have a great week. Good luck in your practicing.